Wednesdays and Thursdays at 11 a.m. on WGSR 47.1. Comcast Cable 17, Time Warner Cable Channel 5, Chatmos Cable 14. Are you going to church only to find a club? Are you tired of looking for the Bible but only getting babble? If you want to find people who are studying God's Word, come examine the Church of Christ. We're meeting right here at 250 the Boulevard in downtown Eden. If you want to hear more plain Bible teaching, watch A Word from the Lord Thursday nights at 9 o'clock right here on WGSR. Some people call him the devil. Other people say he's got folks reading the Bible. See what all the talk is about. Watch Johnny Robertson and Religious Review Wednesdays and Thursdays at 11 a.m. on WGSR 47.1. Comcast Cable 17, Time Warner Cable Channel 5, Chatmos Cable 14. Are you going to church only to find a club? Are you tired of looking for the Bible but only getting babble? If you want to find people who are studying God's Word, come examine the Church of Christ. We're meeting right here at 250 the Boulevard in downtown Eden. If you want to hear more plain Bible teaching, watch A Word from the Lord Thursday nights at 9 o'clock right here on WGSR. Some people call him the devil. Other people say he's got folks reading the Bible. See what all the talk is about. Watch Johnny Robertson and Religious Review Wednesdays and Thursdays at 11 a.m. on WGSR 47.1. Comcast Cable 17, Time Warner Cable Channel 5, Chatmos Cable 14. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to A Word from the Lord. Uh, thank you for watching. And as Michael said, going off the air, if you'd ask what does the Bible say, you'll always get a word from the Lord. We're trying to give you uh, the Bible uh, for questions that are asked and uh, explanations to why we're doing what we're doing. Uh, we strive to follow the Bible and this is how you can examine the Church of Christ if you are in our area. Uh, the Two Feet of the Boulevard is where we're meeting in Eden, North Carolina, 276-340-2653-336-394-5721 or wordfromthelord at gmail.com is how you can reach us. Want to uh, Again, uh, uh, here's some uh, more content information we want to put up for the Brandon and Martinsville <clears throat> and Danville. If you're in any of these areas, if you're uh, there on Sunday mornings, uh, uh, 9, 10, and 11 at, on Martinsville or Danville is 10 and 11 on Sunday mornings. You can uh, study the Bible with uh, the Church of Christ in Martinsville on, uh, excuse me, on Danville on Tuesday night, Martinsville on Wednesday night, and you come down to visit us in Eden on Thursday night. And we'll get you back at home in time to watch what the Bible say in the Word of the Lord on uh, Thursday nights at uh, 8 and 9 o'clock. And also uh, uh, Sunday nights at uh, 8.30, what does the Bible say? Religious Review on uh, Wednesday mornings and Thursday mornings. So it's all over the place where you can study the Bible. And, of course, the, the Danville Tent Meeting. I know Micah has uh, uh, been advertising this. We've been advertising this. It's right next to Blackwell uh, Automotive. <coughs> so... Uh, there, the tent will be going up uh, uh, really, really soon, and, and we'll start uh, Monday uh, with our meetings there. So I want to come out and invite you to uh, uh, assemble there and, and to uh, really examine the Church of Christ, friends. We're not, you know, we don't have anything to hide. We don't uh, uh, gather money under our tents. Uh, both these tents, this is Johnny's tent. This is the tent that, uh, this is where it will be if you want to uh, uh, Google it. Here is Blackwell Automotive. Here's uh, the large uh, open field right beside it, right to the east of it. Here's Riverside Drive running right down here along the bottom of the, of the screen. So this is where the, the tent will be uh, set up. We look for the big uh, white and green tent, and uh, that's where we'll be uh, starting June 21st through July 2nd, 7 p.m. And, uh, you know, friends, when we put these tents up, we're going to have another tent meeting in, in Eden following that, July 7th through the 16th. And these tents, both these tents are brought from the same man. And, you know, usually when people put tents up and they have their so-called revivals and their, their tent meetings, they pass the plate around. They ask for money and beg and plead and, and scrounge and scrimp. And, and they may pass the plate around two or three times. I don't know. I know they'll pass around at least once a night. But you'll never see the collection plate passed around at our tents. 
You'll never see us begging you for money, but what you will find is, is literature, DVDs, books, anything that we have is free. You can come and take it and take advantage of that. <clears throat> Study the Bible, ask us questions. Uh, this is all for you, and I hope that you will certainly see a difference between us and the rest of the religious world, we're individuals who are striving to <clears throat> study the Bible and uh, make ourselves available, uh, open to the public. Uh, we're not uh, hiding behind the walls and people won't come up and force you out, manhandle you to, uh, to leave or to uh, put up your cameras or uh, we're not afraid to go on the record. And so we hope that you will come out and realize that, you know, we're really a, a people who want to give you an answer. And we hope that you're the kind of people who are studying to find out what the truth really is. In Acts 17, verse 11, the Bereans, very noble, uh, and they were searching the scriptures daily. We hope that you're that kind of individual. So we want you to come out and be with us. July, uh, June 21st through July 2nd at Danville. They're right beside Blackwell Automotive. And then July 7th through the 16th, give you a few days to, to recuperate. And, uh, but we'll still be busy. We'll put the tent up in Eden. And then we will uh, go again for 10 more days, and we hope that you will come out and make yourself available. Let us meet you and, and come out and study the Bible with, with us on, on those occasions. So if you're in the area, this is how you can reach the Church of Christ in Eden. And so we want you to please do that very thing. You know, I noticed on the, uh, 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 the last program on what does the Bible say, people were calling again, and they were, and they were saying they were Christians. They were claiming to be uh, uh, Christians. And what that really is, that's claiming really to be kin to Christ. That's really saying that Jesus is your brother. But I want you to notice this. Just because you might be kin to someone or claim to be kin to someone, that doesn't mean that they will claim you. There's a lot of individuals who are famous and have made it, made it, made it big in the world, so to, be, so to speak, and they may not want to claim their own family members who are not as well known or not in the upper echelon as they are, who haven't climbed up the ladder of success as high as they are. And so they may not be willing to claim people who uh, would claim them. The famous person might not want to claim the, the little people. So, so it is with Christ. There's a lot of individuals who claim to be children of God. They claim to be Christians. They, they profess to be Christians. Or if you ask them if they were a Christian, they'd say yes, as indicated by a lot of the callers. But I want you to notice, just because you claim to be a Christian doesn't mean that Christ is going to claim you. Now, there's a way to find out if you are really kin to Christ. There's a way to find out if you are really uh, akin to Christ and, that, and, and uh, find out if he is really would, would claim you as a brother. Notice this, in Hebrews chapter 2, Hebrews uh, chapter 2, let me get my Bible program up here. Verses 11 and 12. <clears throat> Paul said, For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. So Jesus is not ashamed to call some people brethren. The question is, are you one of those individuals? Or do you in turn claim that Christ is kin to you, that he's your brother, but yet he would say, you know, no, he's no kin to me. Well, here's the way to find out if you are kin to Christ. I want you to notice this. Christ, Christ has set forth a standard that individuals must adhere to if they're going to be in his family, if he would claim them as kin. And if we're going to start looking at Matthew 12, Matthew 12, verse uh, 48. Notice this. When Jesus set forth who was his family, it came as he was being asked or being told that his family, his physical family, flesh and blood, desired to see him and desired to speak to him. Notice this. In Matthew 12, 48, they said, Your mother and your brethren are without, and they desire to speak to thee. Here's what he said. He answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother? And who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. 
In other words, he elevated the spiritual family above the physical family. Now think about that for a minute. Neighbors, if you are an individual who claims to be kin to Christ, you might want to stop and see where you put your physical family in relationship to your spiritual family. You might want to stop and see if you are actually elevating your flesh and blood above the spiritual family. Notice this. Christ was always closer to the uh, spiritual family, his spiritual kin, rather than his flesh and blood. Jesus said in John 8, 29, he said, I always do those things that please him. Talking about his father. Now, here's why he would say what he said about his disciples being his mother, sister, and brethren instead of the physical flesh and blood who were standing outside wanting to talk to him. He was closer because he had more in common with these people. You know, re the reason why some people are estranged from their own flesh and blood is because they don't have anything in common or they lose commonality. Their desires, their interests, their perspectives in, in, in life or their, uh, uh, th their priorities ch change or they take a difference. And so the physical family is, is uh, moving apart or they're moving away because they don't have the same desires or goals or agendas or things that interest them in life. That's what separates them apart. That's why even when you go to school, you go to the local high school down here and I can assure you that there's a reason why there's a clique over here called the jocks and there's a clique over here called the geeks or the nerds and there's a, and there's a, a clique over here, you know, that are the, uh, uh, the, the cheerleaders and there's another clique over here that are, are, are you know, I, I don't know what, what they are, but it's because they all have the same interests. See, they all have the same goals. Jesus said, I am more like I am more like the individuals who always strive to do the things that please God. Therefore, I look to them as my family. I look to them as my, my brothers and sisters and mother because they're the ones who are more like-minded. They're the ones who are more like-minded. Notice this. Jesus is on flesh and blood. They didn't even believe him. In John 7 verse 3, he says, His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence, and go into Judea, that thy disciples also may see the works of, of thou, that thou doest. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou doest these things, show thyself to the world, for neither did his brethren believe in him. Now, think about it. Why, why would he say these are indeed my, uh, my mother and my sister and my brethren when they didn't even believe in him? They weren't, they weren't like-minded when it came to Christ, the way Christ was, so he wouldn't call them his brethren. Even though they may be flesh and blood, the greater emphasis was upon the spiritual family. He said, these individuals who are doing will of my Father are the ones who are most important. Now, listen. If you are an individual who looks and says, mom or daddy, sister, brother, and uncle... You know, Granny and Grandpa, they're more important to me than, than what God says. Don't be claiming to be kin to Christ because I can assure you he won't claim you. You see, the individual who is favored in the eyes of God is the individual who's willing to put God first above flesh and blood. Above flesh and blood. Notice this. In 1 Kings 15, verse 11 uh, through 13, this is what King Asa did. King Asa was one of the few good kings that Judah had. Israel didn't have any good kings. But Judah, the southern kingdom, had about four good kings. Asa was one of them. And notice what the record says about Asa. Asa did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord, as did David his father. And he took away the sodomites out of the land. That's the homosexuals. He didn't, he didn't say, oh, we'll give them marriage rights. You know, we'll give them civil unions and we'll give them equal, uh, equal rights as married individuals. No, he, he removed them out of the land. And he removed the idols that his fathers had made. So he didn't go, well, you know, this is where granddad... <coughs>